I'd just like to say, I didn't, I didn't say it the first uh, session. Uh, I want to thank uh, Pastor uh, Keith and Pastor Debbie, and uh, for allowing us to come. It's a privilege. It's an honor, and uh, uh, I know it was in their hearts for some time to have us in. And uh, you know, it's just the timing of God, right? And so we're here at the right time. Snow doesn't scare me off. Cold doesn't scare me off, though I don't like it. Uh, <laughs> but probably neither do you, so. <laughs> uh, welcome to Iowa, if you've lived here any length of time. So, uh, you know what? I love giving product away. I just do. I've always been that way. Just I'm just a giver. Ask my wife. My wife will sometimes just roll her eyes and like, are you just going to give everything away? Like, just everything? <laughs> So I, I, I tell on her sometimes, but it's, it's funny. And, uh, but I, I, believe, I believe this, that uh, 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 seed time and harvest is just that. And uh, if you expect to get, then you need to be a giver. Um, if you expect God to move on your behalf, then you just automatically, you just release what's in your hand and you, and you give it to somebody else. Amen. And so I have, I have two things here. I have, these are, uh, you know, a lot of my product uh, are, aren't mine, um, but I want to get good product into somebody's hand. If I know it's good product, I want to get it into somebody's hand. And so the first thing I got, I got healing scripture on CD. Brother Hagen goes all over uh, probably 50 scriptures, and he just reads scripture with background noise, uh, background music, and uh, background noise of the Lord. Uh, <laughs> Emily, just come forward and preach. Mm. And uh, unfortunately, when you eat, your brain shuts off. No. Uh, so, uh, but this is Brother Hagen. He gives scripture and you have background music to it. It's wonderful, especially if you're dealing with something in your body. Uh, man, pop this thing in. I've popped, I've popped this particular CD in before. When I was dealing with something in my body, sometimes you just don't want to confess nothing. You just want to lay there and do nothing. <laughs> no one's been there. Okay. I'm alone. I'm alone. I'm just preaching myself. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and so, uh, uh, so this is a wonderful healing CD. Anybody want it? Ooh. You, do you want this? Okay. Well, then we'll just give it to you. And this, I would suggest that nobody... Put this in their car if your uh, car has a CD player. Please not put this on. You may drive sleeping. <laughs> there have been stories I've heard that people have put the CD and gone to sleep. Oh, not, not while driving, thank God. <laughs> Use wisdom. <laughs> like don't text and drive but they still do that anyway so uh anyway but this is a pcd and it's got music on it and uh uh background music with uh miss lynette going over uh peace scriptures and so this is a wonderful thing if you deal with any kind of stress a lot of high end stress and you're dealing with a lot of that and or you're just dealing with the enemy trying to give you no peace this is a wonderful cd who wants this does nobody want this? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I'll just give it to who? Who is first? Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, like I said in the first session, my wife's got the uh, microphone. And so if she's got a tongue... I guess I have the interpretation. No, I'm just joking. Um, but if she, uh, but if you hear her just speak out in tongues on the mic, I'll just shut up and let God speak. Amen. I just get out of his way. Amen. Yes. And so she has freedom. Did you have anything, honey, or no? Huh? Okay. All right. All right. Well, welcome to healing school. Amen. Uh, you're going to get a little taste of what... Uh, uh, healing schools alike uh, at the Prayer and Healing Center at Rama, and uh, we're going to do a healing service. And uh, I want everybody to go to First John. Um, Mondays we usually teach. Uh, when we were, when I was there, we taught on Mondays was love, Tuesday was in Him, uh, Wednesday was faith, 
Thursday was the laying on of hands, the anointing. Uh, we, we taught on the anointing or, uh, the, you know, laying on hands day. And then uh, Friday was meditation or how to keep your healing, how to meditate the scripture. And so I'm going to have to lump a bunch of stuff into one session here. <laughs> but we're mostly going to talk in this session about love. Woo! Be excited. Yes. Yeah, that reaction. That reaction is usually the most, that's probably the reaction we mostly get on love. Because the reason why we don't get a really, ex, you know, people get exuberant about love because they, they, in love, all, often we think about what we're not doing. But I'm going to help you today. Because sometimes the reason we don't get excited about love is because we see our own inadequacies. Does that make sense? And our own inadequacies cause us to not be real bold. The Bible says that we're to come to his throne with what? Boldness. Well, when I feel like I'm screwing up and I'm not, and I'm not you know, connecting all the dots and it feels like I'm failing, often I'm not going to be bold and come to him. And for years, I just struggled. Like, for years, I in this, this, this department of love. I just struggled. I just, you know, yeah, I know, I know God's love. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know God is love. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay, you're teaching on love again. Great. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I really hate this subject of love. <laughs> okay, no one's ever been there. I, I just, you know what? Maybe I should just preach to myself. <laughs> But I realized that the reason why uh, often I'll preach out of the struggle I've all my, my own life personally have had. And what I find often is I'm not the only one that are, is struggling in this area. And it just feels like I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying, it's not working, I'm trying, it's not working, I'm trying, it's not working. And so the Lord began to deal with my heart about love. And I think some of the things that I'm going to give to you today are going to be ammo that's going to make the devil run. Because when the devil knows that you're equipped, and you, you see, it's one thing to have a gun. It's another to, to be able to shoot a gun. It's another thing to not only shoot a gun, but actually hit something when you aim it. <laughs> and uh, you would not want me in combat unless I went through some training because somebody's going to die, and it's probably not the enemy. <laughs> <laughs> Poor shot's not even the word. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll tell you a story. I was out hunting with a guy, first time ever, and uh, first time for me shooting a gun. And uh, so I'm out, I'm out there, and it's cold, and I don't like to be cold. And we're out there, and he's like, no, 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 this is how you do it. And, you know, he's trying to show me how to shoot this gun, you know, this rifle. And I've got it up, and I'm, I'm trying to hold it, and I'm trying to put it up against my arm, right? And so this deer walks out, and he's probably from here to where that wall is. And, uh, yeah, um, any normal hunter would have hit it. <laughs> yeah, not me. I'm gifted. <laughs> so I shoot. And I miss it, but it didn't run. It kind of startled it, and it, like, stopped. And he goes, shoot it. Shoot the gun again. Shoot the gun again. So I shot a second time, and I missed him a second time. <laughs> reload. Reload. I'm, I'm reloading, and this deer's like, you are. I'm not being dinner. That's for sure. So I reload. To get, I get it back up to my shoulder, and I shoot again. I miss him a third time. The deer literally looks over his shoulder, looks at me, <laughs> looks back at the forest, and kind of does one of these things into the forest. <laughs> there I realized my anointing was not in hunting. So you can laugh all you day long, all you hunters out there who can actually hit the broadside of a barn well I can't hit the broadside of a barn and so uh, I can't catch nothing either I've tried to catch fish I've tried to hunt I, every animal is thankful for me because they live they're like he's an idiot I just and so uh, when it comes to being equipped you not only have to know what you have but you need to know how to use it because the enemy ain't going to run from you if you don't know how to use it. 
And one of the areas that the enemy prides himself on is your ignorance about love. And the power that love actually contains and what's actually inside of you. Because when you learn what you have concerning this thing called love, then you won't shrink from it when you hear about it. You'll get excited about, oh man, that's what love is. That's what love is. I, God lives in me. And let's start here in uh, 1 John. 1 John. Verse 7. Verse 7. I'll give you a second to get there. Beloved, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's 1 John uh, 4, verse 7. Yeah, 1 John 4. 1 John 4, verse 7. And it says this, Beloved, let us love one another. Now, you know, when I, re when I usually would read scriptures like this, I'd go, duh. Yeah, but I'm not doing it, so leave me alone. I, I, you know, I felt bad. I'd read scripture, and I hated reading it because I felt exposed. And I never realized until God started dealing with an area of my life how valuable love really was. So it says, Beloved, let us love one another, for, the love, for love is of God. Look at that. So love is God, right? Are we reading that? Love is God. Everybody would be like, yes, I know that God is love, but I'm not loving. Huh? huh? Let, us, let us love one another for, for love is of God. So love is God. God is love. God is love, right? So, everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is. For God is. For God is. For God is love. So, does it say here that God's trying to work on his love walk? <laughs> Hardly. <laughs> <laughs> You can answer me if you want. Sorry. Right. Is he perfecting love? Uh, is he trying to walk in love? Uh, is he uh, uh, making sure that love works? Hmm. So if God is love and God moved into you, what moved into you? Okay, let's go look at something. Go to 1 Corinthians, the chapter uh, in the Bible, the one verse in the Bible I absolutely never liked. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Ugh. You should cringe. I'm sorry. Maybe you're not as carnal as I was. Um, but I actually never liked this scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Never liked this scripture. I never liked this scripture. You know why? Because it would share, uh, it would, he would, uh, it would share things about love that I wasn't doing. Let me get to it. Verse 4. Verse 4. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up. It does not behave rudely. It does not seek its own. It's not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things. Believes all things. Hopes all things. Endures all things. Love never fails. Love never fails. Well, let's, let's look at it. Uh, Emily, uh, can you read it out of the Passion for me? Uh, do you have? Um, yeah, can you read it? No, can you read it? And I'm saving the battery, so I had to turn it back on. Okay, here we go. 
<laughs> love is large and incredibly patient. Love is gentle and consistently kind to all. It refuses to be jealous when blessing comes to someone else. Love does not brag about one's achievements nor inflate its own importance. You want me to keep going through eight? Uh, uh, no, you can stop right there. Um, I remember the day I got revelation on the scripture. I was um, I was at Rama. I was in my apartment. I was going through some very incredibly difficult things in my life. Have you ever had a struggle in an area where you were just glad nobody was in the room with you when you were talking to God? I mean, you're having it out with him. Well, I'm having it out with the Lord. You say, man, you have it out a lot with the Lord. <laughs> um, yeah, because... I know that he'll listen to my garbage and then he'll help me. Because my relationship with him is such as this. Not because I think I'm better than God, but I know him enough that if I'm honest with him about where I'm at, he'll listen to it and then help me. Because he knows I'm open for him to help me. There's a difference between giving God a piece of your mind but you're not interested in what he has to say Versus you give God a piece of your mind and you're just saying it ignorantly or you're saying it because you're hurting. And he's like, I'm here to help you. So my relationship with him is in such a way, which everyone can have, that I'm very upfront and very direct with him. But he is, you can ask my wife, but God is very direct with me. There's no gray area with God when he, when he deals with me. It's very black and white. That's why I got to watch myself because in a service I can be very black and white. I got to get a little gray a little bit because <laughs> some people it's a little too like, ooh, you need to like pull it back a little because it's a little intense. Um, but he's very direct with me. And so I remember I was sitting on the couch and I'll try not to bawl during this part of the sermon because... He is very merciful. But I remember he told me to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4, and read it. Well, I read it once. Then he told me to read it again. About the third time God told me to read it, I'm, I'm aggravated. I'm upset. I'm angry. Because I'm like, yeah, duh, I see it's there, but it ain't doing me any good. And I'm very, I'm, I'm being, I'm upset. What am I upset about? I don't even know what I'm upset about. I think I'm upset because um, I'm failing at all of them and I don't know how to be successful in this. You know, it's one thing if I have a, a mentor that's in front of me face to face and I can touch him, flesh and blood, to walk me through it. But you're dealing with God and he's a spirit. And you can't see him. I mean, unless God himself opens your eyes to see something in the realm of the spirit, to see something, you have to live by faith. And so, you're re the, only, the only voice of God most people have is what you read right here. That is the voice of God. And it's very hard sometimes to follow that voice because you, there's no... There's, there's nothing really there to prove that that is true. Have you ever had somebody on the street tell you, well, prove God is real. Prove God is true. Prove that the Bible is real. And they get in your face about it because that's where the world's coming from. They want reality. They don't want something fake. They don't want, they're not interested in your idea or what you think. They want you to prove that what you have is different than what they have. And if you can't prove it, you aren't turning them. 
Now you say, well, that's, you know, that's a really low way of looking at it. Well, when you're lost and without God, that's where you're at. When you're lost and you don't have God, you have no direction. God's not living on the inside. That's why signs, miracles, wonders have to be in the church. Why you have to have a move of God in your life. Because that power will convince people he's real. See, I'm not here to get you to get saved. I just need to prove to you he's real and then leave it up to you to make a decision. But I have to make it a reality. Well, this scripture wasn't a reality to me. I just looked at it as a commandment, a rule I couldn't follow. Well, that can, that can affect your body. How about this? Um, it says in uh, Psalms 107 verse 20, He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. 1 Peter 2.24 says that by his stripes you were healed. Get back there uh, in the prophets. Isaiah talked about that, that by his stripes or by his wounding you were made well. But do you believe it or is it just words on a page? See, we have to dice we got to figure out, do I actually believe what's being said or, do, or, or am I just reading it in the hopes that it will manifest? People are waiting for manifestation. Healing does not start with the manifestation. Healing comes with a renewed mind. If you don't renew your mind, then healing will elude your whole life. It's got to be a revelation. So this scripture was not a revelation to me. So I'm going to, so he had me read a few, you know, three or four times. And by that time, I'm infuriated and I'm yelling at God. <sighs> God bless my darling heart, stupid head, one, one man said. <laughs> and then he said, now, Daniel, that's what I want you to do. Everywhere you see or, or, or what I want you to do, I want you to put my name in front. I want you to use, I want you to switch my name, the word love for my name and put it in there. So this is how that would read if you did it in verse. God suffers long and he said at the end of it, put your name in it. So he got very personal with me. Amen? Got real personal. Verse four. God suffers long with Daniel and is kind. Love does not envy anything Daniel does. God does not parade itself and is not puffed up towards Daniel. God does not behave rudely towards Daniel, nor does he seek uh, uh, his own. It's not provoked. So, and then it says, and God is not provoked by whatever Daniel does evil. Did you hear me? You can't provoke God. He's love. Didn't we just read? He's love. God is love. He's not becoming love. He is God. So he is one. He's absolutely 100% love. Now watch this. God does not behave rudely towards Daniel. He doesn't seek his own. It is not provoked from evil. It does not rejoice in iniquity that Daniel does, but it does rejoice in the truth that knows about Daniel. God bears up all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things concerning Daniel. Put your name in it. God will never fail Daniel. Did you hear me? And then at the end of that, he said, Daniel. <laughs> Daniel, you may fail every, every part of that scripture, but I am 100% bound to do that scripture in your life. You may fail every part of that scripture, 
but I am 100% bound to do that scripture in your life. That means he is 100% bound that when you yell at him, he comes to you in mercy. When you accuse him, he comes to you and restores you even when you didn't ask for it. When, you're a lot, when you come to him and you blame him for something, he gently entreats you and helps you to see truth. He is absolutely 100% in love with you. That is why you can receive healing in your body. Because he doesn't look at you and, and based upon a certain criteria, does he decide who does and who doesn't get healed. He doesn't have a checklist. I was at the prayer and healing center. I had been there for some time. And I was with a, I was actually with another leader. And at, and at this moment, I hadn't, I hadn't become a leader yet. But I might as well have been a leader because she pretty much let, she pretty much told me to do it all. <laughs> and a woman came in. And, uh, we got her to the back room because, so on Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, we have one-on-one -on -one ministry time. And uh, this woman came in, and she had cancer in the bone. And the doctor had sent her home. There's nothing we can do for you. It's in the bone. We can't get rid of it. And uh, my leader looked at me and said, well, you minister to her. And I'm like, oh, great. Yeah, great. Um, I'm a newbie. I've only been there, what, three and a half years now? Um, and the Lord, I heard the Lord on there say, just talk to her about love. Just about the scripture about love that I love her. So Tuesday, we minister to her on love. Uh, Wednesday, we minister to her on love. Uh, Thursday we ministered her on love and she said well I've, I've got another test I got to do and I got to go back to the doctor so I won't be here tomorrow so the next week came she wasn't there on Monday she wasn't there Tuesday she wasn't there Wednesday she wasn't there Thursday I thought oh my god well, you know why didn't she come back you know and so the previous that that following week she came on Tuesday she didn't come on Monday but she came on so she, on her arm, had this yellow vanilla envelope. <sighs> you got to forgive me. Um, so, on one of the days I talked to her about, on love, that... Uh, her value in love, that she was loved, she was valuable, that God loved her. And, that, and it wasn't based on her, her works, it wasn't based on how good, because she came in and she said, well, I haven't been reading my Bible, I really haven't been going to church real faithfully, I have that in my prayer life, I don't really have one. And she began to give all the reasons why God couldn't do anything for her. Well, you know, when you believe that you deserve this, you won't, you won't release sickness and disease if you believe that you deserve something. Well, I, I deserve this. Because this is what I did. This is what I deserve. And, and unfortunately, because we're all human, we do that to one another. What, did you do, what have you done for me recently that gives me reason to do something nice for you? Right? But, you know, children, it's interesting. You, your child can be a little pain in the you know what the day before their birthday but did you take their presents away what if the week of Christmas they were a little pain in the you know what did you still let them have Christmas so you gave good gifts to your kid even though your kid did wrong 
Because love isn't based upon the performance. It's based upon the fact that you belong to me. You're mine. You have my genetics in your body. You're mine. I love you regardless of what you've done, good or bad. And so this woman said all of that. We just kept on love. We just stayed on love. We just stayed. So she comes in with a yellow envelope underneath her arm. She sits there. We bring her back to the back room. <laughs> and I mean, she's glowing. Because when she came in, she looked like death. Anybody been around somebody? I know we got nurses in the room. But if you've ever been around st stage five, there is a stage five. It's basically death. Stage five is basically the worst you can get. Stage four, they say stage four, yeah, but there's early stages of stage four, and then there's five, <laughs> where you got like three weeks to live, two weeks to live. Um, hospice has come in, all kinds of stuff. And so she looked like death. When she walked in, you looked at her, you're going, yeah, that woman's going to die. And I'm just believing she doesn't die in the back room while we have her. <laughs> and so she walks in, and I almost didn't recognize her. She's completely different. The skin was regular, normal. She glowed. It, I mean, it was incredible. And we got her in the room. And, uh, this is what she said. She said, uh, I, I had to have, I had to have something done. And they said, well, we're going to, we're going to take one more x-ray of you for legal purposes. I don't know what legal purposes they needed to do or whatever, but they had to do something for legal purposes. They scanned her and she went home and like Friday, did she say f No. Yeah, Friday night at like 8 p.m., she gets a call from the head nurse that says, you got to get in here as fast as you can. Head nurses don't call you in the middle of, of the week, like, it, like weekend, to do more stuff. They call her in, so she goes in, she spends the whole weekend being scanned, and there's doctors in and out, like, head doctors that have been doing stuff like this stuff their whole life and they got this doctor in and then they bring this other doctor in and they're looking at the they're looking at the x-rays they're looking at stuff in there and they're all shaking their head and they're like i don't know and they're and they're looking at them i don't know and so they hate doing this doctors actually hate doing this but they come in they put one scan up and the one scan shows that she had previously had cancer the cancer was in the bone now, so they could see what previously was there. They could see where the cancer was previously, but they could also tell it in the bone where it's located and everything, so they can explain stuff. And on this scan, they could see where it was previously and that it was in the bone. Then they put up a new one. They couldn't even find the fingerprint of the cancer before. And the doctor said, I don't do this because I hate doing it because I don't really believe in God. <laughs> but this is a bona fide miracle. Amen. That the rarity that cancer gets out of the bone is a miracle. But the mere fact that what she previously had was removed. God in one moment erased <laughs> the mark of something previous. Not only did he love her so much to get rid of the cancer that was there currently, but even erased the fingerprint to remind her she once had it. And love, she hurt on love three days on love. That's all she heard. 
that she was loved. She was loved. God loved her. Period. That's it. Not how to receive your healing. Not how to get your healing. Not three steps to get your healing. Not five steps on how to keep your healing. She heard about love. And said, well, if God loves me that much, then I guess he must want me well. And it was nothing she said to me or, or the other leader. Something happened internally in her that caused her to see that she had value. Healing, God's healing power. Go, I want you to go to Romans. Go to Romans 8. Go to Romans 8. Verse 11. And it says here in verse 11. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He. I'm sorry. He. Who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So if the same spirit who raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. Amen. Think about that. So it says here, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. Can you even imagine that God has decide, decided to dwell in you? The God of the universe has decided to move his life into yours. God has moved in by the scripture. And he who raised Christ from the dead... Look at that. He who raised Christ from the dead. He who raised Christ from the dead. He who raised Christ. Look at the state. The state that Jesus was in at death. He had been buried for three days. He was beaten. He was mutilated. He took a crown of thorns. The Bible says you didn't even know that he even looked like a human being on the cross. He was so disfigured, you couldn't even tell he was a human being. Do we understand what kind of state he was in? It wasn't like he just died. You know, you go to a, you go to a funeral... And you have a viewing and you walk up and you go, oh, that was so-and-so. Oh, I know who that is. That was so-and-so. They were a great person. When he died on the cross, you couldn't even tell he was a human. Meaning, you walk up, you couldn't tell that that's a person you used to follow. He's destroyed physically. You can't even tell he's human. When they pulled him off the cross, he was so disfigured, you couldn't even tell he was a human being. Here it says, he who raised Christ from the dead will, will, will. It doesn't say he will if you do A, B, C, D, E, F, G. He doesn't say he will if you read your Bible enough, if you confess the Bible enough, if you pray enough, if you believe enough. He doesn't put conditions on the will. He says, I will. Remember the, the uh, uh, 
there was, well, more than one time, but one man came to him and said, are you willing to heal me? And he said, I will. Look at the people that Jesus healed in his ministry. None of them deserved it. You have the woman at the well. She, he healed her. You have the Roman centurion who came, and he's a Roman. He's not a follower of Jesus. He asked, recognizing authority, and God gave, through Jesus, gave that man's servant back. He's a heathen. Healed him. And it goes on and on and on. And the, the, the man at the pool of Bethesda laid there. God led Jesus to that man at the pool of Bethesda. And didn't, and didn't give three, point, you know, three points on how to get off the cot. He said, get up. Remember, because he tried to make an excuse. You remember that? He said, he said, well, I've been here and I have no one to put me in the pool. He's thinking about his healing is going to uh, uh, happen at a, in a pool. And his mind is not renewed to the fact that the very pool of God had shown up. He's waiting for the stirring of the water. And so his idea is, this is how I'll get my healing. He didn't realize that the man who stirred the pool was standing right in front of him. And Jesus said, get up, take your cot, and go. And it says, immediately, he leaped to his feet. I believe, you know what happened? Spirit got picked him up, slammed him on his feet, and the moment his feet hit the ground, he was well. And he, and, and not only was the healing dramatic, but he was so convinced of the healing power of God that when he, when the Pharisees and Sadducees came to him to get him to try to back, back step, he said, I don't know. All I know is this man came to me and said, be healed. That's all I know. Go talk to him. He didn't make an excuse for his healing. And neither do you. You don't have to make an excuse for your healing. I'll give you another, I'll give you another story. You want another story? Yeah. So I was on the street. And, I, and we went on evangelism team. This is before I left the evangelism team and everything. And, and so we were, I was out on the street. And uh, uh, a very large lady and her, either her, boy, I think it was a boyfriend. They both looked like they could play linebacker. I mean, both of them, not just one of them. They were both big people, really big people. She probably stood 6'2". He stood like 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. They were huge. And I'm, I see them across, across the way. They're coming out of a bar, and the Lord said, I had a word of knowledge. The Lord said, uh, this person is dealing with ulcers in her stomach. I need you to go over there and hit her. No, 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 no. Get thee behind me, Satan. I <laughs> oh, get thee behind. Bye, 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 bye. You know, you're doing one of these things. Bye, 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 behind me, bye, behind me, Satan. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I'm like, I will not hit her in the stomach. I want to live to see tomorrow. And he said, I told you to go across the street and hit her in the stomach. I'm like, you got to be nuts. I am, this isn't my ministry. I'm under the name of Rhema. Oh, man, I'm out of Rhema for the rest of my life. Now, you better know that you 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 know. Because if you walk up to random people and hitting them, you're going to jail. Yes, you are. So don't get any ideas that you're going to go out here today and smack somebody in the stomach because you think you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna do it. You better know that you know that you know. Now, I know you all smart. You look like smart folk in the room. So I don't think you'd go do that. All I know is something came on me, and I can't explain it. But I gra So uh, they always put new people with me. I don't know why I got new people. Poor new people. They're like... 
they would turn white as a sheet. You know, I'd go do something. They'd be, oh, we're all going to jail. My God. And, and, they, would, and they would tense up and they'd, they'd get white in the face, you know. So this poor girl, she didn't know what the Lord had just said to me. So I grab a hold of her hand. I'm dragging her across the street. <laughs> she has no idea. I drag her across the street. And uh, this is before I'm married. <laughs> I gra- you know, Gray, I better make that specific, you know, on the CD. People, oh, my God, you hate that with those women? You know, I don't know. <laughs> so so I, I'm, dragging, I'm dragging this girl across the street, and she's like, what are we going to do? And I'm like, I refuse to tell her what I was getting ready to do. Because I knew if I told her what we were getting ready to do, uh, bye-bye, hello, you know. Fair, so long, farewell. You remember the, you know, <laughs> yeah, that movie, yeah. Yeah, that, that's what she'd be, that was so long. There. And so we're running across the street, and I get to her, and all I know is I'm arguing with God the whole time across the street. I'm, like, I'm not hitting her. I'm not hitting I'll touch her. I'll do whatever you want. But I'm not hitting her. And so I stood right up in front of her. When I did, I watched me step out of my body. I physically watch myself step up out of my body and I'm standing watching myself the next thing I noticed I said nothing to this lady I reared back I hit this lady I I hit her so hard I actually took her off the ground and this is the problem because I'm standing watching this then I went like this right back into my body Oh, good, great. So when I die, I'm actually going to feel me dying. Great. (laughs) So he lunges forward to hit me. She stops him and says, all the pain's gone. I don't know what that meant. We didn't have much of a conversation. Tears are running down her face. I said, well, the Lord loves you. He wants you well. (sighs) So... (laughs) (laughs) So, so uh, they went about their business. We went about our business. I'm out on the street the next week. I'm with the same girl. She, and so we're out there. And we're minding our own business. We're just on a street corner, just ministering to people, loving people, you know. And we're standing there. And all of a sudden, this black lady has me around the, like this, like in a bear hug, and is, has me off the ground and going, oh, oh, oh. And I'm like, uh, 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 like, uh, 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 can you put me down? This is really uncomfortable. Like, uh, this is really not, if other Raymond people see this, this is really not what you want it to look like. I don't know who you are. Because she, she, when she grabbed me, I didn't have time to see her, like look into her face to know who she was. I'm off the ground. She's excited. And she's twirling in a circle. <laughs> she's overjoyed. I'm like, this woman is way too happy. <laughs> I don't know who you are, uh, but you are way too happy. <laughs> Put me down, please. <laughs> so she puts me down and she backs off. I'm like, oh, you're the lady. Uh, yeah. So she has under her arm a, uh, uh, a yellow envelope. So there's a restaurant sitting right here, and it's a pretty well-lit restaurant. She pulls out one x-ray, slaps it against the glass. Everybody in the restaurant's like, (laughs) captive audience, you know. So she's got one, and she's like, honey, honey, grab the other one. Grab the other one. So she grabs, her husband grabs the other one, the other x-ray, out of the yellow envelope and slams it against the window. And she goes, see that? See that? So apparently, she had severe ulcers. And it leave craters everywhere. So the, the, the x-ray on the left showed what she had. But the x-ray on the right, brand new stomach. Brand new. Off the street. Never talked to her. But guess what? Got them both born again. Got them both baptized in the Holy Ghost right there on the street. Now, why would God do that for a heathen? Coming out of a bar. 
and do anything less than a child of God who's in the church. Why? Why would he do anything less? Give you another story. You want to hear another story? So we're on the evangelism team again. Ah, no, different girl. I felt sorry for people. They, we, they, they had no idea. They're brand new. They're like, oh, we're going to go out in the street. Yay. And they would sit and they go, oh, praise Jesus. And then they'd start assigning people. And I knew, oh, God, if I get a new person, we're done. I'll, it's going to be a it's gonna be crazy night. I can't eat. I don't even know what's going to happen. Because God shows up. Because see, he's not just, he's not even, he's not showing me that he's real. I mean, every time a miracle happens, I do, it does something for you. It gives you boldness to believe God. Every time it happens, you're like, God did that. My God, God did that. God did that. Oh my God, God did that. And it creates a level of boldness that causes you to believe God for the impossible. It does. You never get too you never get so much in God that you get so smart that you think you're smarter than him. The moment you think you're smarter than him, you might as well just sit down, shut up, and open up your Bible again and get humble. Because the Bible says that he resists the proud, but he gives more grace to the humble. You have to first realize God's the miracle worker. He may show up in your life physically, and he may do something physically through you to bring something to someone else, but it's all him. So you're 100%, 100% dependent on him for him to do it. If you're the one trying to receive healing or you're the one ministering healing, you are 100% totally, absolutely uh, in need of him to show up. Period. I can't heal. I can't heal a flea. But what happens? He finds somebody he can flow through, and then because we're human on the earth, that's one of the ways that he he touches the earth is through man. That's how he's chosen to do it. I don't know why he chose to go through Man Avenue. Look at Adam and Eve. You think that was a big screw up? Don't you think God knew that Adam and Eve were going to screw up? Yeah. And he still made them. Yeah. Stupid. And then some people get, get, get a big head and say, well, if I was Adam and if I was Eve, yeah, you would have made a bigger mistake. Right. <laughs> you know, we bash them. And yet God already knew they were going to make a mistake. And already in the mind of God, he already had an answer and he already knew what he was going to do and he already knew he was going to send Jesus. So before they even screwed up, God already had Jesus on mind and he knew when he was going to send him back, send him to the earth to ransom man back. He's not clueless. He does know. That's how he works. He's so smart. He's out decades before you, you, you I mean, your brain like, oh, well, that, that'd be pretty amazing. God can do that. God's like, I've already done that. In the mind of God, he's already in eternity fixing a place for you there. He's so far, of our, uh, 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 far beyond our thinking. So uh, I'm sitting there just mind my own business, you know, because the leaders, they, they hand out the people they want. And so another poor, helpless, <laughs> clueless, <laughs> who'd never been on the street before, girl. She probably a year out of high school. Now she's going to Rama. Oh, God help me, Jesus. I mean, she, she's just learning about the authority of the believer. You know, she's going to school. And they slap her with me, and I'm like, oh, God. And I, I'm actually praying on the way out to the streets. Lord, I'm just asking, can I just have one normal night? <laughs> because I know I got new people. He's going to show out because he wants to show the new people, I'm real, I'm powerful, and if you'll yield to me, I'll work. Amen. So we're standing, and we're, we're, on a, we're on a street corner, and all of a sudden, there, uh, an ambulance pulls up, 
like two blocks away and I see it pull up and there's a lot of commotion and they put somebody in the back of the the ambulance or set them in the back of the ambulance I didn't really know what there was a crowd around and uh, the Lord said go over there and fix it fix it can I get more information please before I go over there to fix it like fix what like what am I gonna walk in on you're like you're like that's an ambulance I'm probably gonna go to jail if I go try to fix that and so he's like go fix that and I'm like fix it no 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 I got a new person right here see she's new she's never been out on the street before I don't really want to go fix nothing <laughs> why don't she and then I turn back to God and I'm like why don't you fix it He's, and he said, I told you to do it because that's the avenue that I've chosen. And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. no one's ever talked back to God. Bunch of liars. <laughs> I was in your house just two days ago. You find out how much talking back to God you probably did. <laughs> and so I grabbed the girl. I'm like, here we go. Because <laughs> I know. She doesn't know, but I know. I grab her hand, and I drag her across the street. It's a miracle I never got hit by a car. <laughs> so I grab another girl, and I drag her across the street. Well, I get through the crowd, and there's a girl sitting on the, the, the uh, edge of the, the ambulance with a massive gash on her head because she had gotten beat up by her boyfriend in a back lot in a parking lot behind a bunch of these restaurants. And so there's blood spewing everywhere and they're trying to get the cut to stop. And Lord said, deal with that. And I'm like, oh, deal with that. Oh, God, blah, 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 blah. Go to jail, go to jail, jail. You know, jail's often on my mind because I don't want to go to jail because there's legal things that could occur if nothing happens, right? So I grab the hanky. I just walk up and I just, I, I left the girl standing in the group. I grabbed the hanky, I slapped my hand on, on the forehead, and I mean, it's swollen. Her, half her face is swollen because of the cut and the gash and because of the trauma and everything. If you're a nurse, you would know what I'm talking about. So I put my hand on it. I watched the swelling drop in my hand. Lord. Kept my hand on there. Well, the paramedics, they're, they're up front talking about something. Blah, 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 blah. They come around the corner. My God, what are you doing? And they didn't just say, my God. They said some other words I'm not going to say. So anyway, they're like, you need to get your hand off of her. Blah, blah, blah. And they, they yanked me and they pulled, and pulled my hand off. And when I did, the gash had already started to seal. And in front of everybody, it sealed in front of everyone. Brand new skin in front of about 25 people. 20 or 30 people. The girl is sitting there going, oh my God, oh my God. My God, God, God's real, God's real. God. And I look at her, I'm like, yes, God's real. Uh, that's why we're out of the street. We wouldn't be out if he wasn't real. I wouldn't be out if he wasn't real. And I'm like, thank you God I didn't go to jail. Thank you God I didn't go to jail. Thank you God I didn't go to jail. Yeah, you think, you think, you think people are spiritual. They're not. They're just so thankful they're not going to jail. <laughs> no, that color that left your face is this thankfulness that I'm not being handcuffed. Because <laughs> God doesn't show up. That's where I'm going. And I, when I pulled the hand off, I was amazed because half the cut had already been sealed and then I watched supernaturally the rest of the cut supernatural seal in front of everybody everybody saw it and people were like oh uh, um I mean tough guys are like oh uh, uh, uh. <laughs> yeah you're not walking so tough are you <laughs> and I mean girls are screaming oh my god how the bleep 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 did that happen and I turned and began to witness to the group about the reality of the realness of God. And like 12 of them get saved right there. One of the paramedics get saved. And just moments before that, he was like, bleep, 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 you do get your hands off. And then all of a sudden, in view of everybody, the cut seals in front of everyone. Now, he did that 
I don't know if she was a believer or not. I don't think she was. She got saved. At least I, she said the sinner's prayer. But the reality is that sometimes in the church we get this idea, you get saved and then God just has to help you mature in God. That's garbage. You are going to mature in God. But how do you mature in God? How do you grow in your relationship with him? Well, you certainly don't grow in your relationship if you sit in the church and are sick for years and years and years. You'll grow in your relationship with God if you're poor and can't pay your bills. That doesn't make you any more for God. That doesn't make you bold for God. It doesn't. You sit in the church and you just wonder, is God real, 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 is God real? And everybody looks at each other and goes, is God real? I don't know if God is real. Have you ever experienced God? I've never experienced God. And then they're like, well, have you ever experienced God? No, I've never experienced God. <laughs> and then you get a church full of people who've never experienced the presence of God. That's a dead religion. Dead religion doesn't save. Dead religion doesn't heal. Dead religion doesn't deliver. Dead religion doesn't set free. Dead religion, you can sit in a garage and say, I'm a car, I'm a car. Vroom, vroom, vroom. But you are never changing into a car. But the moment you said, Lord Jesus, come into my life, God transformed you into a new creature in Christ Jesus to look in the image of the invisible God. Instantly, on the inside. I didn't say your hair color changed. I didn't say all the fat on your body left. I didn't say that your outward appearance changed a bit. But on the inside, you became a new creature, uh, a, new, a new creature that looks just like your father God. You look like him. You talk like him. You have authority like him. You have boldness like him. You took on every trait of your father because the father you had before was death and was full of disease and was full of lack and was full of all this stuff and you were being led down a path that led to death but the moment you accepted him as Lord of your life, what happened is life moved in and you took on the new image of the invisible God. But you cannot act like it until you have the revelation and your mind is renewed. That's who you are. And don't tell me people can't do it. Because people do it in the work world all the time. Models do it all the time. They put on an image of something they're not. Actors do it all the time. They take on the image of acting somebody else out that they are not. Now, if a man by human effort can do that, then how much more can Christ do on the inside of you that if you get a renewed mind, you can act like your daddy? Your daddy is new. Your daddy is not decaying. Your daddy is becoming stronger every day. Your daddy looks, talks like heaven. And all things exist because of him. So if everything exists because of him, if everything exists because of him, if everything exists because of him, you can call on the name of the Lord and be saved. Sozo. See, we think of salvation as you need to get saved and get born again. But you go through a daily process of saved. Daily, sozo, every day. Why? Because you should be so sozoed that every day you were renewed like the eagle. Isaiah chapter 40 talks about. You can be renewed in your body day by day. 
What do you have faith for? And who do you have faith in? Do you have faith in knowledge about the word? Or do you have faith in him who is the word? A lot of people have faith that this scripture is going to make me well. That scripture is not going to make you any more well than me getting a call from, uh, from NASA to be the next astronaut on the moon. Bible knowledge does not work simply because you have Bible knowledge. You can have Bible knowledge and still die sick, still die poor, still, uh, still die um, being an unforgiver. You can die bitter. Because the knowledge doesn't make you live right. The knowledge that the one who is the word moved in. Are you, and really the whole, the whole uh, thrust of this week is this, knowing him. Looking unto Jesus. See, this is what people do in healing lines. They'll get up. They want healing in their body. And this is what they'll do. They have faith that they will be healed. They'll have faith that it'll come to the minister and they'll get a supernatural healing. Now, when, I, when I'm about to say, I don't mean this to be mean, but I don't know any other way to say it. But I have found people will get in healing lines because they just want the pain to go, to, go away. They want the discomfort to go away. They want instant gratification. Now, I'm about to say something, and you've got to hear my heart when I say it. Because I, it, it's going it, it, to, I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to jar you. But he just said to say it. So you better, if you got a seatbelt, uh, you might want to strap every seatbelt you got. God is not your whore. You're not going to manipulate God. You're not going to manipulate him to get your healing. You're not going to manipulate him to get your prosperity. You're not going to manipulate him because God, nature is good. Amen. And when we go to him and we try to manipulate him to do something for him, what we are saying to him is, I want to use you. And then when I get what I want, I'll go live the way I want. I'll forget the Bible, I'll forget prayer, I'll forget you, I'll do what I want, I'll, I'll, I'll shack up who, with, who, with who I want, I'll do this, I'll do that, I'll date who I want, I'll do this, I'll do that. God is not after your instant gratification. He is for your complete wholeness. Amen. Spirit, soul, and body. Amen. That may, you may be complete in desiring nothing. Do you go and still need more? Then you have not touched him. Because God, anyone who's touched him, leaves satisfied. It's the worst thing to go to a restaurant and look on the plate and go, oh my God, I spent money for this? Holy God, I'm going to have to go somewhere else and get satisfied because this is crap. I said it again. <laughs> you, no, you all do say that. You just don't admit it. You're like, this is, yeah, this is, yeah. Stupid waitress, you're getting two dollars. Two dollars. <laughs> yeah, but you do, you blame her. It's the cook in the back. It's the dude who designed that stupid menu. What, chicken breast, and it's this big. You're like, dear Jesus. Birds couldn't even get fat off that. And you leave dissatisfied and you say to yourself I'm never going back to that restaurant people get into healing lines and don't get what they need and then they leave dissatisfied and then you wonder why they live the way they live because they're dissatisfied because what was brought to the table is not what they expected 
because they've been told they'll get this, but they got that. Oh, this is a beautiful thing. You go to a restaurant and the menu will have a beautiful picture of something very, very large on it. That's horrendous. That's mean. And so you, 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 you man, you're looking at the picture like, man, I'm going to eat that. That's really good. That's really good. I'm going to have that. Oh, man, that is going to fill some spots in me tonight. Oh, I mean, your mouth will start drooling before you even get the food. Oh, I know right where that's going. <laughs> and you get all excited. And then all of a sudden, the actual menu, the actual plate gets on your, on your uh, table and you go. False advertising. This is, I can't say that word. And you're thinking it. And, and you're, I mean, you're just, do you know what it does? Is it, 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 it. It creates dissatisfaction, and you say to yourself, I'll never come back to this restaurant again. That restaurant just lost your business forever. Because you ain't going to keep going back to a place where the, you're getting dissatisfied. This is why people run from healing room to 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 healing room. And then when they're at stage four cancer and they're dying and they come to you, what are you going to do for me, brother? Trust me, I heard it a thousand times. What can you do for me, brother? We're talking believers. We're not talking about unbelievers. We're talking about Holy Ghost. Home break. Then they get in the back room and they say, what can you do for me, brother? And they're in pride. And you have to get rid of pride. And you have to get rid of attitude before you can even minister life to them. Because dissatisfaction will create attitudes in you that will cause you to reject the very thing God came to give you. It will birth attitudes and dissatisfaction. And you'll come with an attitude. Now, those who come to God must believe that he is able and that he's willing to do what he said he was able to do. Yes. But you can't come walk, walking up. Okay, brother, put your hands on me right here, brother. And then you're like, and you're full. You, you think I'm joking? I've had him walk up. And sit and fold their hand, arms like this. What are you going to do? Wanna, you know what I want to say? But it's not my ministry. I want to say, take your selfish, prideful self and go sit back there. Because you aren't a candidate. Because those who come to God must believe that he is and that he's able to do what he said he's able to do but you can't come to with an attitude and there's internal attitudes that people come and actually their flesh rejects the very thing that God came to give them he loves people he doesn't care if you're black white Asian he doesn't care if you're you know from across. he'll heal anybody he'll deliver anyone Not based on how much you think you know, but based on how much he's willing. Remember the one person just asked Jesus, are you willing? Are you able? Are you willing? And Jesus said, oh, I'm willing. <laughs> and gave it to him. And so it's these internal things that go on, but it starts with love. Do you actually believe that God is in love with you? <sighs> now think about that. Close your eyes and think about that very, very carefully. Because we get into religious mindsets and we're like, yes, brother. I know God is love. See, I'm dealing with mindsets. One of the anointings on my life is to deal with mindsets. People think all kinds of things, but they're afraid to verbalize it because they don't want to get judged. Well, I don't care if you like me. I'm serious. I don't care. 
I care you get the truth. And the truth sets you free. But there's thoughts that run through our mind. And we say with our mouth that we believe. Yes, God. Yes, he's love. I know. I, I, I know too, too much, too well. Let me tell you all the reasons I know God loves me. And then they go ahead and they tell you all the reasons God loves you. But then they go home and go, I hate you. I hate what I see in the mirror. I don't like this. I don't like this. My life's miserable. Blah, 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 blah. And they spew out of the abundance of their heart what they really believe. They may not do it in front of you, but they do it privately or they do it in the privacy of their own thought life. And the real truth is they say out of their mouth what they want people to think that's what, how they, they believe, but they internally do not believe it. It has to go uh, beyond your confession. It has to be something that is intimate that when you say, Listen, come here, Emily. My wife loves me. <laughs> you make me cry now. <laughs> you know how I know she loves me? Because when I make, okay, I can't say that word. When I make a donkey of myself, And I make her cry. And I say something I shouldn't have said. She's still able to say I love you. See I got a revelation. That she loves me. And it's not based on performance. God dropped something down deep inside of her. And says I love you. And she doesn't waver because I'm a waverer. I have an up day. I have a down day. She has an up day. She has a down day. I could be, I could be totally angry at her and yell at her, go into another room, and two hours later or an hour later, honey, I love you. I'm so sorry. And vice versa. <laughs> <laughs> Right? I'm not letting you take all the blame. I mean, hey. So now think about this. It's not mental assent. I'm not mentally thinking, Emily likes me. Emily loves me. It's not mental assent. It went beyond mental assent. And something came up out of her and, it, and it's the spirit that she carries. I love you. I actually am for you. I believe in you. And it doesn't matter if you look in the mirror and say you don't have value. You can't make it. You're never going to be a success. Because the words coming out of her mouth is I believe in you. And you're going to make a difference. And what's in you is real. I believe in you. Because what do I tell you every morning when you leave the house? You are a success. <laughs> yeah. And what else is it? You are anointed. Yeah, you are anointed. You're anointed. Yeah, you're anointed. Meaning in everyday life, right? Everyday life as an Uber and a Lyft driver, uh -huh. because that provides the flexibility for us to do what we need to do. That and being in DFW, uh, Dallas Fort Worth metro area, where in the natural there's crazy drivers. I mean, it's like crazy. <laughs> we thought Tulsa can sometimes be bad, but so it's like. So that was our, our little thing we say. My angels, your angels. And, and you have your angels surrounding you, and I send my angels to surround you in your car, and you're safe all the time. But that is. Now, wa now watch the words of, uh, uh, words of affirmation. I can be speaking or having a, uh, a wrong thoughts that say I'm not. But she is going beyond what could be seen in the natural and speaking what is reality. When God looks at you, he does not speak current. He speaks what's reality. He doesn't say you're an individual needing healed. 
You're needing healing. He doesn't look at you as somebody who needs healing. He looks at you as somebody well and whole. He's not trying to bring healing to you. You are somebody who carries healing within you. There's a difference. But the mindset, the wrong thinking will cause you and keep you from receiving what God has for you. Get around any abused child and then you try to give them something. Watch. I've seen it with my own two eyes. They can be, they can be abused ye for years. And then you try to give them something. And you're actually a good person. And you actually want good for them. But they'll reject the help. They'll reject the gift. They'll reject the help. They'll re Why? Because the abuse has actually been the message they took a hold of and believed. And when you are sick for a long period of time, you will actually, your flesh will actually take a hold of a message that's not true. Amen. Even, even if you're hearing the truth, your flesh will say, this is what's so horrible about flesh and the soul is this. God says, I love you. And your flesh will go, yeah, he might love, he might love, but you're a special product. You're nothing. That's not for you. You don't deserve that. And the internal conversation of your flesh will actually talk you out of actually receiving. Listen, I can put a gift like this, like this gift right here. I know. I can be like, who wants this? And I go, yeah! I walk over, and I go to hand it to the person, and the person says, oh, well, I just am not worthy. Go find somebody else. I'm not worthy. I know you offered it. I know you made it available. But you know, I'm just one of the unworthy ones. Go find somebody else. And healing often finds its way rejected even though the person really wants it. And they die with sickness and disease because, not because he's not willing, but because the flesh says, no, you don't deserve it. That's what the soul will say. The flesh will say, you don't deserve it. How, how much Bible have you read? How much scripture can you quote? How many times have you been to church this, this month? What are you doing? When's the last time you did a good thing for somebody? And all of a sudden you are put on trial. But if you keep your mouth shut and you line it up with the word of God, God who is the best lawyer in the world, who's not only the judge, not only the lawyer, but he's the judge, will say, Silence to you, you accuser of the brethren. Silence to you. They are deserving because I got news for you that you left out some info from them and that is they're not healed on their own merit. They are healed by my blood. He goes, try to trump my blood. Go ahead, try. So what he does is he brings condemnation. What does Romans 8.1 say? What does Romans 8.1 say? I don't want people to read. Read. Yeah, well, I'm not in the spirit. Yeah, you are. You're a spirit. You live in a body, and you have a soul, and your spirit's the engine, and if you'll, and if you'll align your soul and your body to your spirit, then guess what? You win. Yeah. So the renewing of the mind is not just the renewing of the mind, but it is also allowing God who wants to minister life to you, you let him. Is your flesh going to let you? 
That's the real question. Can you believe? Can you believe? Not yes, immediately. Yeah, I think I can believe. No, you, no. I said, can you simply believe? Not based on merit, but simply because he's good. For the Lord is good and his mercy. Whew. God, you're never going to exhaust. God's never going to, you're never going to exhaust God's mercy. He's merciful and he's good. <laughs> For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. It's one thing. To have somebody who loves you, it's another who will have mercy. Do you know that you have to have a, a level of mercy for people when they come in and they've, they've gone to every doctor and they've gone, they've gone to every healing meeting? I have mercy. What is it going to take, God? What do I need to do? They've been to every imaginable help. They've gotten, up, they've gotten no better. You know, I'm just human. What do you want? Sometimes the person already knows what they need. They already know the things that they need to do. But when you're not confident that God will actually back his word up, then you won't actually do what he tells you to do. Some, some of you, the Lord has dealt with diets and some of you other stuff and, and has dealt with things that you watch on TV. Because some stuff that you're watching on TV, it's, it's creating fear. Stop it. Well, I can watch it. No, you can't. It's creating fear. And where there's fear, there is torment. So you're telling me that you're greater than the word. No, what you're watching is creating torment. Stop it. It's creating fear and anxiety. Stop it. That is for somebody. Well, I like those movies and I like that show and, and I like that. Then, and then you can't figure out why you've got stomach issues and you've got sleep deprivation because you're not sleeping at night. And he says, stop it. Turn the TV off and watch the peace of God begin to deal with some things internally in you that's keeping you up at night. There are people who are dealing uh, with, uh, I, got, I got a weird pain yesterday. It was really weird. Because I'm pretty much pain free. I mean, I you know I don't really if I deal with something, I'm on top of it pretty quick. But I mean, it was it was it was in my right hand, and it was and I knew it was carpal tunnel, and it was severe. And there was a lot of pain there, and I'm like, I wonder who that's for. Like you've been in this long enough, you just figure out it's for somebody. And then I knew. That they, and then I start having neck issues. And I'm like, what's going on with that? <laughs> Sometimes you just have to separate. Is this an attack? That I have to knock the devil out? Like, I can do that. It's fairly easy. He just runs in terror. I just say Jesus, and he runs in terror. <laughs> I laugh at the devil. He's, he's pathetic. He uses pathetic things to get people off course. He's a pathetic, defeated foe that my Lord Jesus beat and beat him thoroughly. He beat him in his own territory and showed him openly, walked him through hell, said, uh, this is the dude you're following? Uh -huh. I just kicked his rear. This is the guy. On that day, he's going to be presented to everybody and, uh, and the nations are going to go, you mean that's the guy that deceived us all? Oh! I need 
to V8. I need a couple of V8. I'm, 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 I'm hanging. <laughs> and so I'm like, so neck pain. And I'm like, okay, who's dealing with neck issues? And it's crazy. You can live pain free. You can live in a whole body. Not only that, but you can live free of anxiety and fear and all the things that come with torment. You don't have to live with it. Amen. So that's what we're going to do. Healing line. But this is how we do a healing line. <laughs> Sit in the front chair. <laughs> there's a reason I do that, and I'm going to explain in a second. But I want you to come forward. And, and I'll say this. Don't let pride be the reason you don't get in the healing line. Right. I don't care how many times you got in the healing line. I don't care how many times. I don't care if you've been in it a thousand. You say, oh, nothing happens. Well, then stop saying nothing happens. That's your problem. Halfway up. You're sitting in the chair. Oh, healing would be nice. Oh, my God. That healing would be so good. Come up and have hands on you. And you, and you go, okay, Jesus, I'll come up. But it probably won't work. So I'm just going to know. And then you're talking and you're talking. And then he goes, and he goes oh, Jesus, just do it. Just one time. One time. Just one, one time. Just one, just one trickle. Just one drop. Just give me one drop. <laughs> You were not a candidate the moment you said, ah, you know, I've been in a million healing. You already stole your healing. Right. You haven't even gotten up and you've defeated the healing that could have taken place here. Yes, right. Because expectation says, I don't care if I got in a thousand lines and never got it. I don't care if I've been in a thousand meetings that I never got it. God is still true. God's word is still true. I believe his word. And I'm going to take hold of what he's provided. And I, and I, with tenacity, decide I have it and it's mine. But most don't talk like that. You have to be determined. You have to be persuaded. That neither lot nor death nor life nor principality nor power will ever separate you from the love of God. You have to be persuaded. And the, and the one person who persuades you is you. God's not your persuader. The Bible's not your persuader. Because there's a voice you listen to more than everybody else's. Guess whose voice you hear and believe more than anybody else's? Woo-hoo. So if I get defeated there, by the time I'm here, it's all, no, it's all void. It's all void. 